The respiratory system is made up of organs that help us breathe. Respiration is the term used to describe the exchange of oxygen from the environment for carbon dioxide from the body's cells. The process of breathing air into the lungs is called inhalation, and the process of breathing it out is called exhalation. The respiratory system consists of all the organs involved in breathing. These organs all have their own unique functions that enable us to breathe as we do on average 23,000 times a day. The respiratory system includes the nose and nasal cavity, which perform a number of important functions, such as providing us with a sense of smell, warming and moistening the air we breathe in, filtering out irritants such as dust, and assisting us in the development of sound. The throat, also known as the pharynx, is a tube that carries air from the nasal cavity through the voice box, otherwise known as the larynx, down into the windpipe or trachea. The windpipe then splits into two breathing tubes, which carry the air into the lungs. These breathing tubes are called the bronchi, which extend into the bronchioli. The breathing tubes branch out many times throughout the lungs until they eventually form tiny thin-walled air sacs or alveoli. The respiratory system does two very important things. It brings oxygen into our body, which we need for our cells to live and function properly. And secondly, it allows us to exhale carbon dioxide from our body. Carbon dioxide is the waste gas that is produced as a part of the body's energy-making process. As you watch the inhalation through the nose, throat, voice box and into the breathing tubes, you will notice the lungs inflating. As we breathe in, muscles are working to inflate the lungs. The diaphragm, a large sheet of muscle which stretches across our chest under the rib cage, does most of the work during inhalation, causing the chest to expand as the lungs fill with air. The air travels down to the end of the breathing tubes where it enters the tiny air sacs. The tiny air sacs are filled with oxygen from the air travelling down from the breathing tubes. Covering each tiny air sac is a whole network of tiny blood vessels called capillaries. Within the air sacs, the oxygen enters the bloodstream through a process called gas exchange. The tiny air sacs have extremely thin walls with a large surface area lined with fluid to enable gases to dissolve. The oxygen particles from the inhaled air pass through the walls of the tiny air sacs and surrounding capillaries and into the red blood cells inside. The oxygen particles are then carried in the blood by structures called arteries. The arteries carry oxygenated blood around the body to all your organs and tissues. This process is essential for our well-being. As the oxygen particles are diffused through the walls of the tiny air sacs into the bloodstream, carbon dioxide, a waste product of the body, is travelling in the opposite direction. The deoxygenated blood is carried in veins from the organs and tissues back to the lungs. Carbon dioxide is diffused from the blood through the capillaries and into the air within the tiny air sacs. Now that the air in the tiny air sac is saturated with carbon dioxide, the exhalation can now occur. Watch as the diaphragm relaxes and air is forced out of the lungs. The air travels back up the breathing tubes and is expired into the atmosphere. The lungs are a lot like balloons in that they require energy to expand, but no energy is needed to get air out. This makes exhaling an automatic response after inhalation. The respiratory system provides protection against foreign particles to prevent them entering the sensitive airways 
and causing disruptions to the gas exchange process. There are a number of protective mechanisms which the respiratory system has developed to safeguard itself. The nose filters the air we breathe in trapping dusts and other foreign particles. Mouth breathers will not have this filtering system, causing the lungs to be more exposed to foreign particles. If the dust does happen to get past the nose, the airways are lined with a sticky mucus which catches the foreign particles. Tiny hair-like structures line the airways to help move the mucus. The cough, which is a reaction to irritated airways, removes the sticky mucus from the airways. Mouth breathing has a number of impacts besides bypassing the filter system of the nasal cavity. Air inhaled through the mouth doesn't have the chance to get humidified in the nasal cavity. Exposing your breathing tubes to harsh, dry and uncleansed air. Mouth breathing is also related to increased risk of infection, anxiety, stress, sleeping problems and reduced immunity to infective bacteria or virus.